buongiorno, as they say in Italy. Well, I think they do. <laughs> Something like that. And I'm being all Italian because I'm in an Italian car. And these, this, 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 this car doesn't get much better, trust me. This is the Alfa Romeo Giulia Veloce. This is the new car from Alfa Romeo. This is the car that's in a different league. It's in a different class as a family car. But what's it like? What's it like to sit in the back, to sit as a passenger, to drive this car? And what's under the bonnet? We need to find out. So without further ado, let's go and check out the new Alfa Romeo Giulia Veloce. Right, so here we are. And well, let's, uh, let's just check this car out because it is absolutely stunning looking. You cannot disagree with me on that, especially in this blue. It's beautiful. The black Veloce badge there, the trim all done in black as well, the blacked out windows, and even just around the edges of the door mirrors there in black as well. Right down to these 19 inch wheels, these petal wheels as they call them, with the yellow calipers inside there. You have to watch, look at the low profile on that, get near a curb with that, so be very careful. And then you've got these sweeping LEDs coming around here to a slightly different grill in here. It's got the black around it there. Still got the old honeycomb in there, exactly the same as the one before. But what more do you want out of a family car? I mean, this is just the epitome. It is fantastic to drive. It's fantastic to look at. And let's be honest, if you're out on the school run in this, this is street credit, this is curbability, this is street credit is very fine, it's pulling up in one of these instead of the, the usual run of the mill Audi, BMW or Mercedes. I know exactly which car I'd rather be in. Right, let's take a look around this car, let's get under that bonnet, let's get in the back and see if it actually is what it's proposing to be. And then we'll get it back out on the road and have some fun with it. Let's go do it. Right. Let's check out under the bonnet, the old uh, business end of this car and see what you get. Well, the bonnet release catch is to the left-hand side of the steering column. You just reach down and give it a good tug back. And round at the front here, yet again, very, very simple to get your fingers in there. You just slightly, it's dead centre, slightly pull the lever to the left there. Big yellow lever, can't miss it. Ready for this? Watch that. One finger. Gas struts, guys. Gas struts. Love it. Little bits like that really make this car. This is an alpha engine and you want to touch it you want to you want to smell it you want to feel it because this is something to behold i'll be honest with you this is a four cylinder two liter engine developing around about 280 brake horsepower with 400 newton meters of torque and all of that achieved with a lovely little turbocharger just over there which is also rather hot i've probably got no fingerprints left on that hand now who's worried we don't care we love this it's absolutely gorgeous it will propel you from 0 to 62 in 5.7 seconds with a top speed of 150 miles an hour and all of that is achieved through a beautiful stunning piece of machinery the eight speed auto gearbox on this car because you can't get a manual if you could get a manual oh my god i think that would just tip me over the edge and i'd probably fall over in a big blubber of like ecstasy let's get around the back let's go and have a look in the boot and see whether this really is the family car it is portraying itself as you get around the back and those good looks just continue going i mean look at that guys isn't that just like it's exactly again how you would draw a car all the little attributes and bits and pieces. And as soon as you get up behind this, if you're actually able to catch up with it, you will see that alpha badge glaring straight at you in your face. I love it. Getting back to the design, this car was designed by a guy called Scott Kruger. And we actually met Scott at the Geneva Motor Show a couple of years ago. If you want to watch that interview, because we interviewed him for about 20 minutes, amazing guy told us all about the Alpha Tonali that it, at then, that point he was designing. It hadn't been made then. Click up there now for that video, you can watch it. But one of the questions I asked Scott when we were there is, and it's an obvious question if you're meeting the chief designer of a motor manufacturer, what car do you drive, Scott? And he said, I drive a Giulia Veloce. And I was like, really? And he went, amazing car, best family car ever. And now I can almost say that, Scott, you, you nailed it, mate. It really is. Anyway, enough said about Scott. Don't forget, go check that video. It's really worth, he's such a nice guy. Um, DAB radio aerial on the top there, the old shark fin. Then you get this lovely big sweeping rear screen here. And it's one of those floating screens. So you get these lovely lines horrible big rubbers that you know in those old cars where the water used to sit and then it would rot away 
with these new sort of modern windscreens and rear screens, they sit and they float, that's what I call them. And those lines, they all move down here. Everything's really tight and sharp as well. So it's been properly built, this car. You've got the sweeping LEDs coming around the back here. They're moving straight down to the bottom here. You've got this big aero piece underneath here. It's very, very similar to the uh, Quattrofolio, which is the next car up to this one. But it's very reminiscent of that. And you get the big black tailpipes. Now I will mention these are tailpipes. That's not the actual size of the exhaust on this car. It's actually inside there, but you do get two. And it does sound really peachy when you put it into the old dinamico mode or sport mode as we call it. Um, the boot itself, well, very simple, little button there, touch button, up she goes. Beautiful, simple, everything works really nicely big boot on this. I wasn't expecting that. I thought there's going to be some sort of compensation loss here for all the bits that are going on, but really amazing. This car doesn't have any spare wheel in it. It's got run flats all around. It comes with one of those horrible puncture repair kits just in case you do need to use it. Um, throw them away, just really not worth it. Not a lot to talk about in here, just plenty of space. You definitely get two sets of golf clubs in here. You definitely get two large suitcases in here and a couple of smaller bags as well. The only thing I will say is there is a bit of a lip here where, and also this is very plastic. So if this is a family car, as it says it is, you're gonna be putting things in and out of here quite a lot. So there's gonna be bikes going in here maybe, there's gonna be push chairs. This is gonna get a bit scratched. So. It might be worth looking into getting something to cover that up if you can. Not sure about that. All in all though, a lovely big space. And a great, great thing, a great part of this underneath here is a couple of handles. Now if you pull that one forward there and you pull that one forward there, that releases the two seats at the back there. So if you've got to push anything through here and you're in a bit of a hurry or it's raining, you quickly pull those, then follow me around here, open the door and you will see, as I pop this down, it's a 60-40 split and it pops down there like that, apart from this one has taken the seat belt with it, but that's because it's in the middle. But there you go. I mean, all in all, I'm gonna come back around here and have a look myself. You can see how much room you've got through there, which is really excellent for, you know, basically a family saloon. That's what it is at the end of the day. Let's go and see, let's get the seats up in that back and see how comfortable it is for your passengers. Cause I think that is gonna be the crux of this car, whether it's comfortable for the kids or whether you're picking up some friends or whatever. So let's go and do that. Okay, the first thing you're gonna notice when you get in the back for the passengers is how far back that door opens, which is really nice. If you've got a child seat here and you're trying to put the young one in, it's gonna make life a lot easier having that door being able to fold it right back like that, really nice. And when the kids get a little bit older and they start moaning about the car sickness and oh, mum, how much further? This large window at the back here is gonna really help with that sickness, with that nausea that they get because it's, it's big, it gives them plenty of view out, and it's well below my shoulder line, which means your average kid in the back here is gonna be able to see out, no problem at all, and that really does help. Um, a little bit disappointed in the center console here. I would have thought, you know, with the money that you're paying for this family car, you would get independent rear heating controls. Well, the only thing you do get are a couple of rear vents, and that's it. There's no, you know, controlling it, it's either, blasting out and you can't change the temperature. So that I think is a little bit sad. Also, I can tell there's gonna be some arguments kicking off in the back here because there's only one USB charger. I mean, Alpha, come on, you can afford to put two USBs in there. That's essential, especially you've got two young kids in there, both want to charge. They're gonna end up having a fight in the back here and then it's all gonna, yeah. I think if, if you've got kids, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Two USBs, penny pinching. Um, only one I meant is penny pinching. Granny stockings, why do they keep putting, in the old days we used to keep maps in here or books, you know, like your parents would tell you to, will you read something, you know? And you're like, I don't want to read, it makes me sick. Yeah, but I put a book in the back for you. It's behind Granny's stockings. And they still seem to put them in there. Maybe it's just for keeping those knick-knacky toys that float about and you've got to put them in there. It's a shame really. Um, you've got really nice seating arrangement in here. It's very, it's, it's quite wide, which is what I like, and it's extremely comfortable. You sit quite low, so you're not actually sitting on top of this, you actually sit in it. And that means the head height in here is really good. A couple of nice LED courtesy lights as well in the back here, which really brighten this whole thing up. It is an airy place. It's a really nice, you know, you get a good view out as well. So once again, that all helps with sitting in the back for long periods of time. Um, the shape of these seats is cut beautifully. 
um, to allow you plenty of leg room and you can get your feet right under the seat there. And you know, I wouldn't be averse to going a few hours in the back of this car. It really isn't that bad at all. The center transmission tunnel is very, very high because this is a rear wheel drive car. So that transmission is going all the way through there. So if you are going to get a lift in one of these being, I think it would be very short journeys. You'd be sat here in the middle and you wouldn't be wanting to go too far because it's quite stiff as well, but you would get a couple of people either side. You're not going to get a couple of child seats either side. Uh, the child seats fix in through the usual Isofix points, which are just here. These ones are the foldy uppy ones, and then they click back down when you've finished using it. They're very nice, but I can see them breaking off at some point, and then you having to buy another set of them, because they don't sell one at a time, um, to replace it when you come to chop it in for a new car, or you're selling it to you know someone else. So yeah, and also I've noticed that the seat belts aren't sort of recessed as much as they should be. It'd be nice to have them pushed right back, but that's as far back as they go. So you are gonna catch your, you know, your skirt or your jeans or whatever you're wearing when you're sliding across there, if you do decide to slide across. Some nice headrests, um, adjustable, and in the center here, there is a nice armrest with a double cup holder as well. All in all, it's a comfortable space to be. And as I say, I wouldn't mind doing a couple of hours in the back of the car. Where I would like to spend more than a couple of hours is up the front there where the driver is because that is what the whole, the whole part of this car is about the driver. So let's go and have a look what it's like for the driver and what you get in the new sort of facelifted uh, cockpit, dashboard bits and all those. Let's go and have a look. Right, before I jump in and show you how nice this is for the driver, you get a fully electronic seat on this. You also get the same over there for the passenger as well, but it's really nice. It's got the memory on it as well, so you can set your memory in there. On the right here, you've got your obvious bits and pieces, your window winds and your mirror adjustments, and you've got your lock that comes up there as well, just in case you hadn't noticed. Um, on the right-hand side over there, oh, I've got to say, I've just sat in there. How lovely is that? That seat is so nice. It's really bolstered here as well. Almost, you can tell it's like an Italian design seat. It's, it just hugs you. It's really lovely. Um, you've got the lighting control system over here. So you just set it onto the auto and then you've got your fog light adjustments and you've also got your dimming adjustments there as well. Really nice and easy and set up. And then just below that, of course, it's the Italian. You've got to have a place to put your shades, haven't you? There's your shades and they just pop in there and you just keep them in there in a nice little cubby. Look at that mustn't forget that they're in there because I've done that a few times as well. But nevertheless, if it's your car, that's where they go. I'm gonna pull this door to just because I wanna show you how nice and neat this whole area is, how lovely it's all laid out and how perfect that driving position is. Okay, so it's, um, it's keyless entry and it's keyless ignition as well. I've already put the ignition onto the, the, you know, the non-engine running bit so I can show you around this sort of new car that's been set up because this is where most of the changes have been made on this car. It's all this cockpit here. Um, we're going to start with the steering column. Well, that again, it's got loads of positioning. You can set that in almost any position you want. It's so nice. Perfect there and just lock it back up there. It's, uh, as I said, it's a keyless start. So you've got your stop start down there on the bottom left hand side. It's not a red button on this one. However, I have found online, you can get a little replacement one, which is red if you really want to go to that, and you can just pop it over the top of that one. Um, on the right-hand side of the steering wheel, you've got the telephone system there, so you can push that for, to activate your telephone. Now, don't forget, this car comes with Android mirroring, it comes with Apple Play, it's got Bluetooth on it, it's got absolutely everything. So you're going to have your phone all geared up, and that will all run through that quite easily. Below it is the Ask Alpha button, as I call it, basically it's like ask Siri or ask um, Alexa. You just push that and you can ask it different bits and pieces like tune to radio two or whatever you want. Um, and to the right of it is the volume setting and then you've got the media left and right buttons there as well. So it's basically all your media bits are on that right hand side. On the left hand side here, you've got your lane keeper, you've got your distance control. That's the distance between you and the cars in front. So once you're on the, the motorway and you're sat there, it will keep you within your lane. It will keep you at a certain distance from the car in front. You've got your cruise control and you've got your speed limiter as well. It's all there, it's all very simple to use. Um, indicators and lighting stalk over here on the right and your wiper stalk over here on the, on the left, sorry. On the right is your wiper stalk. Don't do it that way round. <laughs> Never have done, why would they? In the center here, well, first of all, you got that nice little place to keep your key. I love that. It's even got a little padding in there. So when you push it in, it doesn't rattle about. You've got your Italian logo badge here, like the, the national flag of Italy. Oh, 
really nice. Lift this up here in the middle, your glove box. Again, you've got another USB in here, USB, a USB-C, an aux in as well. And then a really nice touch on here, you've got a wireless charger for your Apple. Um, and you can put that in there. Now, the good thing about this, not just any old Apple wireless charger, when it gets to 90%, to stop your phone overheating, it cuts off, so it just keeps it at 90% for you. So it never gets hot. That's really nice. And you've still got room in here to put other bits and knicky knacks and bits and pieces that you want. Um, before we get onto this, you know I've got a thing about knobs. This has got loads of knobs. I love it. Right, if you're watching me for the first time, you're probably saying, okay, time to turn off. Uh, AJ's just gone a bit, you know, weird on us. No, I haven't. Because you'll see my, you know, mentality behind my thinking here. If you've got gloves on and it's freezing cold in the winter, you don't want to be getting in here and having to take your gloves off and then push all these, you know, your touch sensitive bit on your seven inch screen there. You want to be able to get hold of a knob and turn your heating up or turn your volume up or go and maneuver bits up here with your gloves on. And I'll tell you what, it's got loads of knobs in here. Look, one, two, three, four, five. These are mostly Italian because they're quite small knobs. And then there's a big Germany sort of knob down here because this one is very much like the BMW knob, if you get my drift. This is like the eye cockpit one. So it goes up, it goes down, it goes left, it goes right, and then you can push it as well. And it does all bits and pieces like that. Your volume's over here on your smaller knob, um, the Italian -y knob. And then on the right here, this is your mode selector. Now, on your mode selector, if you turn it to the top there, it changes the suspension settings. You can set all this up yourself. Now this is called dynamical. Uh, dynamic or sport mode. So that's on the top there. And if you go down to the middle one, that's normally, which means normal mode. So your normal every day, it all comes up on the screen here as well. And then down here is your eco mode. So that makes it go a bit slower and doesn't drink as much petrol, which is quite nice. I've left it in the normal mode, but when we get it out on the road in a minute, we'll put it in the dynamic home. We'll have a bit of fun because it changes that exhaust note as well. And you know, the baffles open and it just, you know, if you, if you're driving the mother-in-law around, it's going to be down in the economy mode. If you're out with the wife, it's going to be in the normal mode. And when you get out with the kids, it's like, daddy, daddy, put it in dynamic. Or I sound like a couple of little Italian, Italian kids there. Anyway, I'm waffling. Let's carry on. Double cup holder here, just in front of this lovely little gear selector that you've got. Um, and then just in front of that is another space to put more bits and pieces. Um, you can remove a lot of these bits and shake them out to get rid of all the muck and bits that you put in there. So if you did have loads, you know, coins or whatever, it's very handy. I like things like that. You've got a 12 volt adapter and yet another USB up the front here. Why didn't they take one of these USBs and put it in the back there? It would have made more sense, wouldn't it? Heating controls, we talked about that. This car also comes with a three phase front heating system. Keeps you nice, keeps your posterior rather nice and warm. Um, and then up here, you've got the lovely seven inch touchscreen. Now, if I go to the home setting and I, I use this large knob here, so I'm going to scroll across here like that. You can just turn it very simply like that, and you'll see everything's changing. And this car, the new version of this car, has everything. You can set this car up, it's as good as any of its German competitors. Um, before that, it did struggle a little bit, I must admit. That was one of the, the drawbacks with owning the Alpha. It didn't have all the bits and the, all the pieces and bits and bobbies, as they say. It now has all that. Um, I'm not going to bore you with it because I want you to find out exactly how good this is by playing around with it yourself. Um, in the center of the instrument cluster here, it is digital and to the right, either side, lovely, it keeps it nice and typical analog style. You've got your fuel gauge over there and you've got your temperature gauge over there. Makes, makes everything very simple. Let's have a look at the glove box, guys. That is important to us. Now, yet again, you see, it's nice to own one of these. It's nice, it's nice to have an owner's manual, but the size of that glove box, is it really worth it? Because if you go on here, I've noticed, you can actually go into the owner's manual because it's programmed into the computer. So you really don't need this because it's on here. And even if it wasn't on here, you could do it on your phone in seconds. So we could save all this money and get rid of that. And then, you know, we could get like loads of other extra bits and pieces in this car that you wouldn't, or a bigger glove box would be nice. At least you wouldn't have to cart this about with you. Anyway, we'll pop that back in there. It's not the end of the world, is it? All in all, what a lovely, lovely place to sit. And loads of bits and bobbies all over the place to help you drive and help you enjoy your Alpha. I want to enjoy this Alpha now, and I want you to come with me and enjoy it too. So let's get it out on the road. I'll see you out on the road in just a second. Once you get out on the road in the Giulia Veloce, when it's in the normally mode, the normal mode, it's 
beautiful to drive. Simply stunning. It's smooth, it's responsive, it's not over silly, and it just ticks along. And you can almost imagine doing two, three, four hundred miles in this car and getting out feeling exactly the same way as you got in. And so would be the same with your passenger or passengers in the back as well, because the suspension, the adaptive damping on this car is superb. If every little bump and every little nook and every roll in this car, they, the chassis, everything is all working together to produce almost a, a crystal drive, the, the way you would expect an Alpha to be. And the Giulia Veloce is just no exception. But, and there's a big but, then you have the option, that big butt, to stick it into dynamical mode. So when I turn right up here and we get onto the country roads, let's have a little bit of dynamico, shall we? Let's just see what this car is like. Okay, so we're gonna put it into manual by clicking over to the left there with the, uh, with the gear shift, and then we're gonna turn it into dynamico. You don't have to hold it over, it's not like the, uh, the quadrifolio where you have to hold it over and go into race mode. That is now in, you can hear and, we're, and there we go, we're dropping into third. <laughs> the steering's tightened up. You can hear the exhaust. Everything is, start, I'm, I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Is it gonna twitch? The answer is no, but we've got, got, we've got things on the road. We've got to take it easy, but now we can open her up again. Oh, word, this is absolutely stunning. Everything's, it's all come together all of a sudden. So it's gone from a family car into something rather exciting. <laughs> the only way I can describe this. And we're dropping down a gear again. I'm just literally into the bend. Oh my word, this is responsive. Oh God, oh wow. Wow, wow, wow. That's all I can say. Right, calm down. I've got to calm. <laughs> What have you done, Alpha? This is amazing. Absolutely incredible. I went from just, like, I've got to put it back. Oh, it's all got to go back. It's all got to go back. Back into normal. Let's be normal. Wow. That really, really, I can feel the hairs on the back of my neck have gone up. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Okay. So that's it in its dynamic. I mean, it's not going to be like the Quadrifolio. If you want to see the Quadrifolio when we had fun with that, Click up there now, guys. We actually had some Italians come down and have a look at it as well. It was great fun filming. Just give it a good click up there. Watch that video, because it's really good fun. For the moment, trust me, this car, as a family car, for the money, is simply superb. There isn't much any better than this at the moment. I love it. So why would you go and spend the money on the Quadrifolio? Why not just stick with this? Well, I suppose there's a sort of level of status, really. If you own a Quadrifoglio, then perhaps you've got to that other level. But if you can't afford one, this car is only just over the 40,000 UK pounds entry level. Yes, I did say just over the 40,000. It's highly affordable. By, even if you've got a family with a couple of young kids, you can afford this car. Why would you want anything else? I do not understand it. I want to drive this car. This is a driver's car. Okay. At the moment, let's, let's have a look what it's doing to the gallon. There's a menu button here on the wiper stall. If you push that in the center section there, comes up on the digital section. If you push that like that, and it's telling me I'm getting 25.8. Well, no wonder, we've just had it in the dynamic mode. And I mean, I've been driving it like that quite a bit and it's great fun. I'm not gonna get the best economy. Plus it's a press car, don't forget, it's not my car. So it's been ragged, it's had, you know, it's had a good innings, this car, I can assure you. Makes it very loose as well, which is really nice. Um, so you're not gonna buy one of these for the economy. And even as a family car, 25.8, you're still getting a lot of fun out of this. You could take, you know, take the family out for the day and then, then on the way home, you know, I don't know, have a little bit of fun while everyone's asleep, do you know what I mean? <laughs> I would, I definitely would, I love it. I absolutely love driving this car. So, I mean, price-wise, just over 40 grand. Economy's not the best in the world, who cares? Looks-wise, 10 out of 10, guys, come on, you've got to agree with me, it does look absolutely stunning. It's a really super car to, uh, to actually play around with as well, I really love it. Um, at the end of the day, it's an Alpha, and this is the Giulia Veloce. There's, a, there's some good safety aids on this car as well. 
stuff that you would normally pay a lot of money extra, like blind spot mirrors straight away. There's lane keepy, there's lane, there's distance uh, between units. I mentioned all this when we were doing the up car, you know, brilliant nav system, TomTom -tom nav system, works stunning. Um, everything on this car with the new cockpit is all designed with the driver in mind and it's also designed with the competition in mind that, you know, it's not to be outdone this car. It has really brought itself out, it's pulled its socks up and it's gone, you know what, I'm a good family car, I've got all the bits and pieces, but at the same time, I'll blow, I'll blow you, I was gonna say blow your nuts off then. <laughs> doesn't really sound very good, does it? I've just so enjoyed driving this, you've probably gathered that. And um, I'm really loath to give it back tomorrow because this is our last day of filming. Um, and it's almost a shame. I'm on these lovely roads through the country. It's the absolute hunting ground of the Alpha. This is where they live. This is what they were built for. Those Tuscan roads out in Italy, pretty much the same here in the UK, over the little hills and through the, through the narrow, windy roads. And the chassis on this car and the adaptive damping taking over and, and just throwing this car around without you feeling insecure in any way, shape, form or fashion. I've got to hand it to you, Alpha. You've nailed it with the Veloce. I'm looking forward to, in a couple of weeks, we're going to be doing the, um, the Stelvio, the Stelvio Quadrifoglio. Now, that's going to be a bit of fun as well. So uh, look out for that one as well. Um, guys, you've been watching me, AJ the Player. I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I've enjoyed making it. Um, as you probably know, we're, we're not a one-trick pony. We, we do lots and lots of videos because we're part of a big organisation called The Player. And The Player is also, before you switch off, you're going to get something for free here and you're going to love it as well um, because I know you're going to love it. It's The Player is a men's bookazine. Now, a bookazine is, is a magazine that has a hardback that comes out, you know, every three months or every, you know, it, it's like... It, you're going to love it, guys. It's got cars in there, boats, it's got interviews, it's got golf, it's got food. Everything us guys love is in there. It's called The Player. And if you go to www.theplayer.co.uk, there you are, it's coming up there now. Go there. I'm not a data capture person. You know that. You can see what I'm like. I just love cars. Um, just put your name and email in. You can either download it. It's 220 pages or you can watch it, look at it online and then flick the pages over and there's tons and tons of stuff on there that, that us guys absolutely love. Ladies, if you're watching, help yourselves because it's not just for men, although it's designed for men. It doesn't mean to say you can't go and have a look at it. So go and help yourself. It's there and it's free because you watch me on AJ The Player YouTube channel. So there you go, simple as. Um, like I say, you've been watching me, AJ The Player. Don't forget, like, subscribe and comment. If you've got any questions, stick them in the comment box down below and one of us will get back to you, definitely. We'll always answer decent comments. Keep them decent, guys. Um, leave the bell sign unchecked if you subscribe because then you'll get regular updates. And we do do at least a video a week, sometimes two or even three during our busy season. So, and they're not all cars, as I just said. There's interviews, there's boats, there's all sorts. We even had helicopters. Helicopters, can you believe that? And private jets. I remember doing that one. That was quite good fun as well. So there you go, guys. All said and done. At the end of the day, one last request I will ask of you. Give me a big thumbs up, please, because we don't get bonuses, don't get cash bonuses, don't get paid anymore, but it just says to the bosses and the sponsors at the player, job well done, simple as. And by you doing that, that lets them know that I've done a good job, if you think I've done a good job. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next week with something else. Don't know what it is yet, but if you leave the bell sign unchecked, you'll find out probably at the same time as I do. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Take it easy out there. It's a weird old world, but above all, enjoy life.